So we're at um, we're at eight thirty. Um, do you want me to to dive in and uh, Frank? I have your slides, but we can kind of just go through. If people don't have slides, they can just kind of talk and um, yeah. I'll just uh, I just have a couple slides to get started here, and then um, we can I'll hand it off to whoever wants to go next. And I'm monitoring. Uh, this is broadcasting on Facebook Live as well, so I'm just going to monitor monitor the chat on there if there's any questions that come up. Um, but otherwise, we'll uh, I'll dive right in. So to anyone that's watching outside of the four of us, um, this is the final uh, of three webinars that um, we've hosted on Boating Basics. So the first we covered marine apps, um, just some, some uh, cheap options or, or free options you can get on your phone to help support you getting on the water safely. Um, while uh, for new boaters, uh, we figure out you know, where you want to make investments and um, enhance your skills and whatnot. The, um, the webinar yes, or last week was focused around buying a boat. So we had, we heard from a broker, um, a bit about insurance and uh, on um, surveys and the importance of surveys, as well as someone from the finance industry. Um, and both of those are available on the Benyon Yacht Club um, Facebook page. If anybody wants to go back and watch them, it's an hour of various people talking. So it's a little dry, but if you skip through, you can find some, some decent content. And this last one is uh, all about community. Um, so I'm just going to be talking today, um, or all of us are going to be talking today about um, community, um, organizations, education, um, and resources that are out there to support um, existing members of the recreational uh, boating community, as well as people that are interested in um, joining our uh, our community um yeah so just to start here i'm just going to talk a little bit about benyon um so we're located on the uh, in east bay uh, on the Bordeaux lakes just about 20 to 25 minutes outside of uh, sydney um nice aerial shot of us this summer definitely no boats in the water now um so we're non-profit volunteer driven club um, and just some of the programs or some of the services that we offer, uh, we do weekly keelboat racing until uh, we ran until the middle of October this year. Uh, of course, social events and poker runs. We have our annual regatta that runs the long weekend, the end of July. Um, we also try to host some on the water and off the water skill building workshops. Um, we have a pretty robust junior sale program um, and more. And if there's time at the end, I've got a couple slides to talk about. Um, but most importantly, we are a community of dedicated enthusiasts that we want to help get you started. And I tried to choose some photos here uh, from the past year um, to just show how we all uh, like to work together um, to help each other to uh, figure out problems and support each other getting out on the water as much and often as possible um, and having a safe and fun time. Um, so of course, our as a club, our mission is to connect each member to, to local experts, local champions, and as well as organizations in the Maritimes that support um, recreational boaters to get out and enjoy. And um, I'll just make note that we do have a new member special. So if, if you're interested in joining our club, uh, it's $1 uh, for the first year for a family membership um, and a one-time joining fee of $200. Um, so, and again, uh, I did choose these pic pictures very uh, specifically. My wife and I are very new to boating, and this was uh, our first race, I think, in our fall series. And we were 15 seconds across the start line with our boat, and our head stay snapped. So that was a really fun experience. And this is one of the um, one of our other club members, who uh, uh, Kevin, who's very knowledgeable about boats, that helped us both get our sail down and uh, get the head stay down, so we could replace it. And we were racing a week later. Um, and that's only through the support of, uh, of uh, the amazing community that we have here. Um, so we'll just have some presentations from some folks on the line here. And then uh, we're hoping that you leave with uh, an, an enhanced understanding and knowledge of what's out there for supports, organizations, programs, some of the benefits of memberships with, uh, with these different organizations um, and, and anything else that, that kind of comes up through the conversation uh, to keep it affordable and accessible to, uh, to uh, enjoy the water and recreational boating in, in Nova Scotia. Um, 
and we hope that uh, I hope that it will, we instill you with a sense of the amazing community at at Benyon, as well as across Cape Breton and across uh, across the maritime provinces. Um, and that is my I think that's my oh yeah who am I? Uh, that's me. Um, I'm also on video here, and uh, my wife and I. That's our boat barrel rider. We bought it this uh, this spring, um, and we have a four year old son, and uh, we're really just loving the. Uh, loving the Bredore Lakes and loving sailing there. And I'm a volunteer board member with, uh, with Ben Yon. Um, Pat, Frank, or George, who would like to dive in first? I didn't really have a agenda. Ladies first, no? I knew there. you were gonna say that, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't think of prov um, providing some slides, but I got a couple of props, well, at least one or two. So we'll, we'll use those instead. Um, my name is Patricia Nelder. I am the executive director of Boating Atlantic, which is a not-for-profit organization of boat dealers, brokers, boat yards, marinas, channelries, and service providers to the recreational boating industry. Um, so we're, we are industry related. We're not uh, consumer uh, related. Um, but what do we do? We market to the consumer. Uh, we market boating. We own the Halifax International Boat Show. Uh, which is usually held annually in Halifax in February, but uh, we just got word today that our producers are planning to have it on uh, March 25th to 28th. That takes place at Halifax Exhibition Center in, in Halifax. It's a four day show. It's a great opportunity for us to put industry boaters and boat buyers together in, in one building. And we are able to provide some educational features. And I will say that because we're always, always accepting of anyone that wants to provide an educational feature at the show. We have had in the past, Andrew, and you possibly don't know this, when the uh, Cape Breton group was funded, they came and did some marvelous presentations about boating on the Bredore. That was probably about four years ago. And okay. um, I Would know- that have been with uh, Race the Cape? It was with Monica and also with Race the Cape, yes. Okay. They, they came together, they had a booth at the show and they, they gave us a beautiful presentation. Um, we produced a, a guide about boating. Um, here, here, here's my prop. But, yeah, I don't know I'm, how to put that. Boating Atlantic, of course it comes up backwards, isn't that funny? But we've done it for several years, so I have many of them. Many different covers. Um, I'm trying to think if there was one with a cover of the uh, of Cape Breton. I'm sure there is one in here somewhere. Um, however, I didn't come across it in a hurry. And this, this guide, we usually um, put all the um, marinas in it that we can find and some a little bit of information. Benyon Marina is in there. Um, it's, we also include events that are ready by the time of publication. And we put information about boating in the region and we also put uh, rules that um, legislation that concerns boating from the Office of Boating Safety and information about whales and whatever else we think is, is, is information that boaters would like. And it's very popular. We give it out at the boat shows. We give it out at marinas. You probably have them at uh, Benyon Marina. I would hope that you do. And, um, but this year, I don't think we're going to publish it. The pandemic has killed a lot of our opportunity for distributing it. So uh, we'll probably just go online. We also have our website that mirrors that, which is maritimeboating.com. And uh, we try and keep that more up to date than the guide because the guide does go out of date pretty fast. The government likes to change websites. So we try and keep them more up to date online and they stay in the book. Um, what else do we do? We work with the uh, Transport Canada's Office of Boating Safety. There's a lot of legislation that concerns um, boaters, as you may know, uh, as regards to safety, as regards to licensing, as, a, as regards to uh, navigation and charts and a lot of things that, uh, that boaters need. Uh, we attend the uh, Canadian Marine um, advisory council when it's going either virtually or or in person in ottawa and we are members of an organization called the national recreational boating advisory council where we get to speak directly with the uh, director general of uh, transport canada currently um, transport canada is 
consulting on changes to the pleasure craft licensing. Uh, they want to start charging a fee uh, for for boats over six meters or over at 9.9 .9 horsepower and they are also consulting on changes to the pleasure craft operators card. We work with similar organizations across Canada in BC and Manitoba, Ontario, and Quebec, which also have trade associations like Boating Atlantic. Their names are funny enough. Boating Ontario, Boating BC, and Nautism Quebec. And also with the National Marine Manufacturers Association, which brings together boat and equipment manufacturers in all of North America. So that's what we do. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions to, to anyone who has any on, on what we do. Um, we, uh, historically, we have low number of questions that, uh, that pop up, but I'll keep, uh, I'll keep watching them throughout the night and, and, and or throughout this, this presentation and pass them on. Um, but I did have one question on the, you, uh, or two questions, I guess, on the, um, boating guide. When is the publication deadline to get, um, information uh, in? Unfortunately, we will not be doing it this year. Okay. But any, any information you'd like us to put on uh, maritimeboating.com and we can just pop that up. We just, um, we, then we have it, we have it archived and if we want to print it the following year, we will. Okay, yeah. And uh, we, um, th that might be a nice one, even if we just print off the, um, uh, the web-based version for any, any folks that come to visit yeah. the marina and whatnot yeah, as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's great. Um, you sound extremely busy, <laughs> Pat. That is not, not really, not, not, not currently, no. <laughs> I'd <like> to be busier. <laughs> uh, there's a lot going on. That's, uh, that's wonderful. Um, yeah, and uh, I think that will, uh, a lot of the, the touch points that you talked about there, Pat, I think will tie in quite well with uh, both Frank and, and George in talking about education opportunities as well, um, changes to, you know, maritime law or, or regulations or whatnot. Um, and I know that, that both Sail Nova Scotia, Sail Canada, and uh, CPS offer really great education um, around those topics. So with that, I'll pass it off to either Frank or George. Um, you guys can fight over it. I'll let Pat decide. <laughs> George, I want to hear from George. George. Go, George, go. <laughs> let me unmute here. Uh, am I presenter now, um, uh, Andrew? Uh, I have just made you a co-host. You should be able to share your screen. Okay. So, um, CPS, Canadian Power and Sales Squadron, is a Canadian-wide organization that is dedicated to the uh, promotion of, of safe boating, mainly through education programs. Um, and um, hopefully I'll be able to, can you see that screen there? Did you hit the share screen button on the Zoom control? I thought I did. You might, when you click it, it might uh, pop up a dialogue box to okay, share them. screen. I'm there. Host disabled participant screen sharing. Uh, yeah, okay. Hold on. I, I made you a co host. You want to make George the co host? Yes. Isn't this fun? Isn't this fun? <laughs> All right. I think that's, that might be it. Share. Right. There we go. There you go. Okay, so there's this is the members benefits. This is basically uh, CPS now based on the COVID uh, experiences is, is basically ceased all its classroom uh, presentations. We're basically doing online uh, courses right now, which I find is better uh, from the perspective that uh, the preparation that CPS has done is extremely well done, I think. And it allows you to share a lot of links that you may not have available in a classroom. Anyway, I'll, I'll just briefly go through this member benefits. So uh, they, they've probably seen this before, but there's uh, there's insurance benefits for both uh, boats and home and auto. Uh, uh, for charts, there's a discount savings on chartering from Sunsail, outdoor equipment. Uh, sea tow uh, and equipment itself, 
and then they produce a quarterly magazine, which you get uh, as part of the membership. So that's the, the membership uh, spiel. Um, right now, um, I'm, I'm acting as a tutor on an online course that CPS is putting on. It's called Boating 2.3. It's basically the basics of navigation and gets into a number of different issues. Um, but I do have that up here, so I can go through some of that stuff to give you a flavor of what we're able to offer in some of these courses. So um, this is the, the agenda right here, magnetic compass, global positioning charts, aids to navigation. I click on that particular one. Uh, bear with me. Oh, I may have to log in again. Right. Um, yeah. Just bear with me here. I'll log in. I just want to give you a, a flavor for what these courses are able to do. Um, okay. Uh, coming, 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 coming. Right, so this is the what they call the boating two three combined, and um, it starts off with uh, the magnetic compass, global charts, age to navigation. So if I click on that particular one, um, each one starts with course notes, each section, um, and um, to give you an idea of what they are. You get, uh, you know, the, the actual text of the thing, port hand buoys on navigation, starboard, uh, fairway buoys, that type of thing. So there's course notes, which are nice, but um, sometimes it's better to do it in a video. And there's videos with each one of these things. And also uh, there's links to different uh uh, navigation aids, for instance, um, you know, I'm trying to, there we go. <laughs> Sorry about this. <laughs> it's all good. This is, this is the world we live in now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but this particular one has about 15 participants in it right now. We meet on a weekly basis and each student is assigned a tutor. So you, you get the group participation type of thing. And also you get uh, uh, a one-on-one -on -one tutor that's able to assist on any uh, aspects which you maybe find difficult uh, in the course. Um, and they're finding that uh, they're finding that quite uh, quite good. Um, CPS has done an awful lot of uh, prep on this thing. And uh, I'll just spin down here. Um, so there is conning exercises, which as you, as you know, is basically navigating by sight. Then there's tutor sessions with the one-on-one. -on -one. And then we get into navigation, introduction to plotting. It's actually using the chart uh, and plotting on a chart, labeling uh, exercises. There's cruise exercises, which basically develop your plotting skills on using a chart, electronic navigation. So there's actually a down, downloadable uh, chart plotter that uh, you, you can use on a tablet, that type of thing, link into that in that session, and you can download charts using that particular uh, platform. Then they get into skipper's responsibilities, environmental responsibilities, weather, bit on ropes and, and anchors. Uh, on this particular one, uh, I did look at this particular video, which um, is a link out of the course. And um, it basically goes Hello, through. Sailors. I'm Captain Tom basically goes through the um, 
of the line. How to belay a hitch. And this is our this is our basic on a hitch. cleat. Now you'll see. So there's all kinds this, of links on the that, in the course to this, stuff like this. Um, I've taught these courses for 20 years, and I find this online approach is is actually uh, much better um, from the the amount of information you can access. Um, and then they get into different things like uh, handling a boat on a power, trailing, towing, that type of thing. So it just gives you a flavor for um, what's available. And um, these courses, um, um, there's an ongoing one right now, and there's a schedule for further online courses in the springtime as well, which, which you can get from the CPS website. Basically, that's what we're in. We're about Andrew. That's uh, that's wonderful. I have a a couple questions for you, um, George. The um, um, I, if memory serves, um, the cost of membership for CPS is it around thirty seven ish dollars. Yeah, it's not expensive. It's it's in that order magnitude. Um, uh, and then, of course, uh, there's there's uh, cost for each one of the courses. But there are a uh, there's benefits uh, cost benefits for being a member, something in the order of fifty percent of the cost of the course. And I think at at the very least you get the free three what is it three editions of Canadian Yachting Magazine a year and. Um, yeah, I think it's it's published on a quarterly basis. I just got the, the latest one recently, which has a lot of really good articles uh, about boating. Uh, there's obviously promotional information there. Um, this last edition, there was a couple about from uh, Paul and Sherry uh, Shard, who have cruised around the world for years and years and years, and they're in the Bahamas right now, or had done a section on the Bahamas. So um, that was quite interesting. But the, they do uh, offer a lot of tips on anchoring, handling boat under power, uh, prop information on... Uh, wash and uh on, and wake so yeah i know it's a good it's a good uh, it's a good magazine um in terms of the education and i i've seen a little bit on the um um especially looking into like bare boat charter opportunities um so a lot of the companies reference education that is done through the us or the uk would this would these courses be recognized by chartering companies if you wanted to charter a uh, bare boat charter a... yeah they would I, I i actually bought up a boat in the in the uh in the charter fleet in the british virgin islands in uh, 2007 and i i took it up to nova scotia in 14 but uh as a result we've chartered all across the cape britain and the mediterranean or the caribbean and the mediterranean and um, um my credentials with CPS were always accepted everywhere. Um, Mediterranean are a bit stickier, so you have to make sure that you've got the paperwork in hand. But um, yeah, no, no issue there. And um, the courses are they um, um, are they like self study, or do you have deadlines that you have to hit, um, or is it kind of you work through it within within reason, or varies by by course, I guess. Your own, it's your own timeline. Uh, you, you don't have to do the exams at the end of it if you don't wish. You don't have to do the exercises if you don't wish. Uh, you get out of it what you put into it. Um, so it's online at your level and at your speed and however you want to approach it. Mm -hmm. And I think just looking through your website, the the costs were, um, just to give folks that, that um, might be uh, listening and interested, um, we're anywhere between, I want to say about a hundred dollars to two hundred ish dollars in, in, in that, that order. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, I'll, I'll give you um, just a flavor here on what courses are actually offered. Uh, oh, this is Moodle. I use this in university. <laughs> this yeah. takes me back. Yeah. <laughs> That's a platform that they're that they're using and. And I don't know much about it, quite frankly, but uh, it seems it's a great to work platform. For them. Yeah, is it? Yeah. yeah. 
Um, here's a, um, I still still on the course, but let me just uh, I'll go back to the members benefits and then they've got in there a, a course. Um, yeah, they've got in there a course outline of some of the courses that uh, online courses that are being used. So uh, are you, am I sharing now with you? You are. Yeah, we can see your screen. Mm -hmm. Good, good stuff. Uh, okay, let me get into their site. All right, so here's the courses. And and I will say I took the um, uh, the VHF uh, ROC um, this spring or over uh, the start of the pandemic. Really, my wife and I both both took it online, and it was fantastic that it was offered online. Yeah, um, because uh, I do find sometimes it's hard to find in person courses that um, that are offered up on the island here. Yep. Um when we were doing classroom courses, I did teach that for quite a few people around here, but uh, since that's stopped, we've uh, we've been kind of curtailed there. Anyway, here's some of the courses that are offered online, Boating 2 and Boating 3 combined. This is the one that I just showed you right now. The CPS tends to repeat a lot of the material, so Boating 2 and 3 have been combined online. It, it covers an awful lot of the same thing. And then uh, inshore navigation is covered on boating four and five. And then offshore na navigation, which is basically, basically celestial navigation, use of a sextant, is covered on boating six and seven. Um, so there's and there's self-study uh, courses on VHF and that type of thing. They have done an awful lot of prep on this. It's it's quite amazing actually. But there's Courses on boat maintenance, uh, electronic navigation, um, and uh, whatever whatever you wish. They pretty well covered the full gamut of what you'd require to operate a boat sa safely. That's yeah. uh, that's wonderful, especially some of the other courses on on maintenance and whatnot as well. Um, and good to hear that they were talking. Uh, you you mentioned a bit about on anchoring technique and yeah. Um, yeah so I think I think that's great. Um, I'll just, just throw it out there to anybody that might be watching online, just, uh, to feel free to pose any questions. Um, but, uh, waiting patiently in the background, we've had, we've had Frank, <laughs> Frank, I, I think I made you a co-host when I was trying to make George a co-host. Oh, you, you? you can screen share, or I have your slide here. If you want me to run it. If you my... want to do it, that's fine with me. Sure. Can um, George, George a question? Oh yeah, that's... absolutely. On your schedule, how, how does one find the schedule? Because it seemed I was just playing around with it. It seemed to push me to Dartmouth, to Halifax, to um, to, to Lunenburg, and um, it, it, if that particular squadron isn't offering the courses, but they're online, is there a is there a place that you can go to see who's offering what, or do you have to go to each squadron? No, you can. Uh... Uh, through the website, you should be able to access um, the online courses and get information how to sign on to those. If if you can't, then uh, I'd be happy to put you in touch with the right person. Okay. Her name is Anna McRae, is our education coordinator for the Nova Scotia, uh, for Halifax, actually, Halifax Squadron. Are you, where are you located, Patricia? I'm in, um, in, in Lunenburg County. Right, yeah. Um, I know that there is this boating two three is going on now, and there are additional courses going on in the springtime. Um, if you gave me your contact information, I could make sure that people got in touch with you. Um, I, I I do know the people. I think from the Lunenburg. I just was curious that if you're in Lunenburg and someone's offering something in Ontario online, is that a possibility that you can get into that course? Absolutely. Um, the only, there's there's 16 participants and uh, we only have one from Cape Breton. Okay. They're, they're all across the country. Okay, that's that's good. I think probably on the mobile side, I just wasn't finding the right place. So I'll look on the main site and I might have more luck. And, good luck. Yeah, and Pat, I will speak to that because I had looked at the boating two three course as well. Um, and uh, um, the same thing happened to me. You keep get bounced, getting bounced to like a local website. Um, so for yourself and for anybody that might be listening now or later on, um, 
if you just send an email, so I just sent an email and said, am I able to access this? And they, um, I think I got a response the next day just with the information on how to, okay. how to sign up for it. Um, so it's it sometimes depending on what you click on the website, it, it does bounce you around, it seems. Mm -hmm. But um, but that, as George said, that was the response I got that anything offered online anywhere, we're, okay. we're able to get into. Okay, perfect. Yeah, which is great, which is like yeah. just an incredible resource. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right, Frank, <laughs> now. <laughs> okay. And just tell me when you want me to advance the slide. Uh, advance the slide. <laughs> Um, so thanks, Andrew, for putting this initiative together, a wonderful initiative, and hopefully um, it's valuable to the sailors up in Cape Breton and specifically at the Ben Yon Yacht Club. Um, so what the Sail Nova Scotia do? The big one this year, which shifted our focus, or was our main focus, was working with the provincial government to get sailing back on the water. As you know, the restrictions hit in early March or middle of March, and we were told, you know, stay home. Don't go to your club, uh, don't prepare your boat. Um, but we worked hard with the province uh, and with Sail Canada to put a document together that would allow the safe opening for sailors uh, to first of all, head to their clubs to prepare their boats and then also to, uh, to start sailing. The final phase was when they opened it up on June 5th for competition and when you could have social bubbles of up to 10 people. Uh, that didn't have to be your immediate family. So that let uh, kids go sailing with their friends and also for a keelboat racing to take place. So uh, that was a big one. Again, we're in the lockdown phase. Thankfully, uh, we're not affected now because there's not any sailing going on, but it is certainly something that we're going to monitor very closely. I know that hockey and basketball and a number of other sports are shut down right now. So they're working with the province and how they can reopen safely. And, uh, and hoping to do so uh, very quickly. Um, so we've been around since 1976. We've got 30 member clubs across the province, including Ben Yon, which has 27 members. And we've also got some cruising schools uh, down the South Shore and here in Halifax. Uh, we've got over 2,200 members and 1,000 participants. 1,000 participants are the kids in the programs mostly, like up at the Ben Yon. Uh, estimate we've got about 9,000 boaters at clubs in Nova Scotia. So we include family members. So if Andrew said he's got a wife and a four-year-old, but they only count as one member in our books, but it's actually three of them are out there enjoying sailing. Um, we also train the instructors and coaches and the race officials in the Sail Canada's nationally recognized training program. Some people ask us all the time, what's the difference between Sail Nova Scotia and the Canadian Power and Sail Squadron? Uh, what we tell them is CPS does online courses and we do the on-water courses. Uh, there is some overlap with some of our VHF courses, some of our uh, coastal nav courses, uh, but we work very closely, uh, certainly with somebody like Mary Ridgewell here, where we're putting people uh, in touch with them if we can't deliver that program. Um, there's three of us. There's myself, a technical director and the provincial coach, and we're located uh, at the Sport Nova Scotia office in downtown Halifax. Um, all the members of clubs have the right to race and can apply for a Perth Nova Scotia rating. So one of the rules, racing rules of sailing is you must be a member of your national authority. In this case, it's Sail Canada. Um, but if you're a member of a yacht club who's a member of Sail Nova Scotia, then you do have the right to race at any regatta, whether it be Chester Race Week, uh, East Bay Regatta, uh, Northern Yacht Club out in Vancouver, down in Florida, wherever you will want to race, you do have that right. So next slide, Andrew. Oh. Why, uh, okay. There we go. Yeah. Um, let me just, you're blocking it. Um, for the past number of years, we've been around 2,500 memberships um, for the past eight plus years. This year, we were down about 10% because of COVID. What happened was a lot of our members uh, come from Ontario, Quebec, and the eastern U.S. and just couldn't come into the province this year. So, And also some people got spooked and didn't want to take their boat out if they have uh, health conditions that uh, could get serious if they did catch COVID. Uh, our youth programs are usually run at capacity, including the one up at Ben Yon Yacht Club. Um, the keelboat racing numbers are declining a little bit, uh, and it is a concern. But what we're finding is that if a club hosts a fun regatta, 
numbers shoot way, way up. So fun regatta can be less competitive, uh, usually a one day event, usually some sort of gimmick, some sort of party afterwards, so on and so forth. Like the East Bay regatta um, has always been a lot of fun and seems to drive uh, participation. Um, there were also a number of our clubs are looking at uh, different racing formats uh, as a one day instead of a weekend or a long weekend. The PY system is the Portsmouth yardstick system, which basically handicaps any boat from a laser to a Beneteau to a hunter to a swan to Andrew's boat. And I don't know the model of it. So, uh, and that means that you can get out there racing opties, lasers, 420s, all in one fleet. Um, and I know that Pat down at the Indian Point Yacht Club um, has run some racing uh, using the Portsmouth yardstick system. So uh, you just go online and we can certainly send you the link to get, uh, to get the rating and then you set it up and it's a ton of fun. Um, we've seen good development up in Cape Breton, the Northern Yacht Club with their new facilities and their wonderful fundraising efforts from a Chase Ace. Uh, the Ben Yon Yacht Club creation and expansion and offering a full junior sailing program and then up in Mabu as well. And in each of those places, it takes a champion uh, to lead that. So certainly at the Ben Yon Yacht Club, it's been Brian McDougall, who's been uh, certainly spearheading the junior sailing program. Uh, next slide. <coughs> My clicker doesn't seem to like this very much. There we go. No. So just a couple of issues facing us. Um, Currently, women only make up 35% of our participants. Uh, there's a lack of diversity. Male, pale, and stale is one description of sailors uh, right across uh, North America and even around the world. Um, in 2020, uh, the popularity of the sport exploded. There was so much demand for sailboats, for power boats, for anything that floats on the water because people were um, stuck at home with COVID, couldn't travel and decided uh, to spend their recreation money on equipment. So it was uh, quite striking to see. I think uh, certainly nobody was planning for it. Uh, it was a good problem to have all things considered. I think we'd be happier without having COVID. But, uh, but if there's any bright light coming out of this, it's that uh, more people are getting out on the water and enjoying it. Um, and then the other challenge is the instructors for outside of Metro. I know uh, the Banyan Yacht Club uh, is always challenged finding instructors and so is the Northern and the Bredore Yacht Club and up in Mabu as well. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, so we offer a number of programs, uh, Sail Canada program. So we have the dinghy learn to sail. We have a start keel boating, uh, which is a weekend course. Then we have a basic cruising course uh, which is a five-day course. We have the VHF radio course and a coach boat safety. So operating your tender safely, how to approach somebody in the water, how to tow somebody effectively, safely. And uh, that course, as I said, is all on the water, actually operating uh, coach boats. And you can see a quick uh, screenshot of what's on the Sail Canada website there. Uh, next slide. Uh, so in courses in Cape Breton, uh, we've got Justin Spillman up at uh, North Sydney, who actually sailed his boat from Vancouver to uh, North Sydney five, six years ago. Um, so he's certainly very, very comfortable on a keel boat as well. So uh, he's a great resource for the kids and for the adult sailors up there. Uh, Dan Cloutier recently ran a course up in Cape Breton, I think up at uh, Benyon. I have all the uh, tests here. I have to mail back to him. <laughs> okay. Uh, and several Metro-based instructors are able and enjoy, not we enjoy, enjoy traveling to Cape Breton to deliver a course. So if you have any, any uh, interest in a course like that, let me know. I can connect you with an instructor. We can send him or her up uh, to work at your club for a day, for two days, for three days, what have you. Um, they enjoy it. You guys get a lot out of it and we get more happy boaters uh, out there. So next slide. Um, and as George said, uh, what we found this year is a huge demand for online learning. So we all pivoted in early spring and started to modify many of our training programs so they could be delivered virtually. It was an absolutely huge success. Um, the demand for VHF courses, uh, Judy Robertson usually delivers about 12, deliver, or trains 12 people at that. And I think this year she was up over 100. Uh, our race official courses, usually about 15 take them. 
this year we were over 140. Now that was right from across Canada because what we did was we were the first to introduce it and people jumped all over it uh, from across Canada, much like the CPS courses. Uh, it's the same course and we were happy to have them have them aboard. And then we can also offer a number of non-certification seminars. So whether it be on boat repair, engine repair, or um, you know, racing 101, if you're new to uh, keelboat racing, what you should know, uh, the basic rules, so on and so forth, so you feel comfortable uh, on the race course. And we're likely uh, repeating all these online courses again in 2021, because I think we'll be under COVID for another at least six to eight months. So next slide, I think we're nearly done. Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions or information, um, I've been at this for almost 19 years now, which is hard to believe. Um, I always loved going up to um, Cape Breton. I remember the days of the uh, Royal Cape Breton Yacht Club. Um, the air shed, we've been all over and we certainly enjoy uh, visiting you guys. Uh, so if there is anything, uh, help at anything on the water, boat related, please, please, please uh, just reach out to myself. If I can't help you, I can certainly point you in the right direction. So uh, thank you, Andrew, and thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much, Frank. And I just, um, for, for anyone that, that uh, may have missed it, um, if you're a member at Benyon, you are a member of, of Sail Nova Scotia. Um, so that's included in your membership fee. When you, when you pay for the membership fee, um, then automatically you're, you're, um, you, you join Sail Nova Scotia. Um, and so for anybody that may be new to a sp specifically sailing, um, so we did do a couple updated um, perf ratings for some boats this year. Um, and uh, we like to see people get out on the water and have some fun. Um, and um, we, uh, so we did assist some members in getting uh, updated perf ratings for their sailboats. Um, and yeah, there was definitely uh, some, we, we heard lots about the success of the fun regattas and um, we've, got some, uh, we've got some plans in the works for uh, 2021 to take advantage of some of the interest in, in those fun opportunities. Um, and as you mentioned, Frank, Dan just wrapped up, uh, we just wrapped up actually th this past weekend, uh, navigation, I think it was intro and intermediate navigation course. Um, and uh, that, that was excellent. It was a really great course. And I can see, um, George, what you presented on boating two and three, there, there definitely is some overlap, but I could, I, I could see the benefit of, of both the, the, uh, navigation course through sail Nova Scotia was two weekends. Um, very, very, you kind of dive in, you're in a classroom setting, um, you get two weekends to cover the material. Um, and then there's the, I think CPS offers that online study um, opportunity as well too, which is um, benefits to, uh, to both. And um, yeah, we're, we're just very um, grateful that, uh, that we were able to access that. And for anybody listening, any education programs, um, reach out to Frank, reach out to George, reach out to myself as well. Um, that we can we can help uh, navigate any of the logistics of getting people up here. So, for instance, getting access to the club, um, at the clubhouse, and making sure you know for even for Dan coming this way for the navigation course, making sure that we were meeting uh, COVID guidelines and um, getting study groups together in between sessions and things like that. So that's the whole point. Um, I did just want to. I think we have. I, I didn't see the. Yeah, we've got a couple minutes here, so I'm just going to. Um, also kind of augment what everybody's been saying a little bit about, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, I'm getting a thumbs up. So, um, so on top of what has been said here for organizations, we have industry representatives, we have um, through, through Pat's, uh, through Boating Atlantic and Pat's group, um, the, the, the guideline, uh, a write-up, actually, if you go to the Boating Atlantic website, a write-up of all of the marinas, and there's an interactive map of all of Cape Breton. And if you know Cape Breton on a boat, um, it is easy to, to, to visit some really incredible um, places um, easily, just, just a day sail away. Um, and that could be anywhere within the lakes. It could be around to um, Sydney Harbor. It could be over to um, 
like Arashat and, and Isle Madame. And there's some really amazing places. And, and Pat, your website has incredible, in, a, a wealth of information on, on that, as well as contact information and amenities that are available and, and things like that. So definitely check that out. Um, education pieces. So, uh, and what Frank was talking about, I guess I'll start with what Frank was talking about with the uh, on the water races. So what we as a club offer you, um, so this year we had an extremely successful Wednesday night race series, as well as a few, uh, we had our East Bay regatta. Um, we had the most visiting boats this year um, from outside of, of Cape Breton than we've had in, in several years. So it was a really successful year for us. Um, both boats that participated in the races as well as, as cruising boats. Um, and so what we added this year, we had sponsors. So this picture here, this is the, the crew of um, Kukulu, a Kirby 25 that completely um, swept the, the fall series. Embarrassingly, we the rest of us hang our heads in shame. Um, but Big Spruce was our sponsor. So we had two boats every single uh, Wednesday night that won a free round of beer, which, um, you know, and we had a free turkey that was given to uh, the winner of the, the, the uh, race on Thanksgiving and things like that. So we, we do and, you know, cake when it's people's birthday and, and stuff like that. So um, there is that opportunity to, uh, it, it's, it's more than just the seriousness of racing. Um, we're actually not a serious group um, and uh, we have a lot of fun and we try to, to uh, make sure that it's, it's accessible and we add some value to it. Um, and again, you know, our head stay snapped 15 seconds over the start line. And by the time we were tied up with somebody up in the bosun's chair trying to get that down, we had a member from every other crew over to to see how they could help. And it's just a, a really great uh, great group of people and a lot of fun. Um, and I mean, COVID guidelines this year were pretty restrictive, but typically if somebody wants to get out and learn a little bit about sailing, a little bit about racing, um, skippers are more than happy to, uh, to pick up crew for the most part. Um, this year was a little restrictive that way, but um, we do have a, a social media page. You can always reach out. And, uh, um, on the water and off the water learning opportunities. So these are not courses that you would dive into in the same depth that um, that you would get through CPS or through uh, Sail Nova Scotia. But for instance, we had a spinnaker packing night that we just had a bunch of spinnakers and a bunch of folks come out, learn how to pack spinnakers, learn some basics of knots. Um, and then we went down to a couple of boats and the practical, uh, the hands-on piece of getting the spinner spinnaker pull up what the different ropes are how you actually run them so we just spent three or four hours doing that um, and by the end of the season we saw a couple boats flying their spinnakers for the first time mine included lots of fun um, and that that's really and so and and then we you know we had a night where we just went out and there were people that had never helmed uh, a boat before so just to get a crew to go out sailing and let people take turn um, at the helm and uh, let people kind of switch positions that you don't always get to do if you're just racing. Then of course, this is my job to coordinate this. So as there's interest, please uh, send me a message and, and uh, um, I'm happy to coordinate these types of event. Um, the other piece is we are a community. So this, the, these are both um, um, pictures from the hurricane that hit us this, this September. Um, so uh, there were a bunch of us that went out um, and we had videos, we were posting pictures, we were posting updates of wind speed and everything like that. Um, so that community members, uh, with their boats here, you know, feel secure knowing that, uh, there's a bunch of people just out there making sure that things are safe and secure. Um, and it goes beyond just bad weather. I mean, there's, there's people walking the docks all the time, um, making sure that, that boats are tied up properly. Um, you know, if we see something like a, a motor, if you hear something running, uh, more than it should. Um, you know, we're, we're here to, to, um, we're a community. We're here to <laughs> protect your, protect your investment. And, uh, of course, social events this year, we couldn't do our open mics, the middle picture there, but, um, typically we, on Wednesday nights, we have pub nights, um, and we'll see what next year brings. Um, but absolutely incredible <laughs> musicians at Benyon and in Cape Breton. Um, and of course we have, uh, uh, poker nights and, and things like our poker runs and things like that. So, um, and this year actually was our most successful poker run ever. So really great to see so many people out. Um, and that, that was, that was it for me and from everybody. 
And so I think we'll just, uh, if there's any questions from anyone um, or any further comments from any of our speakers here, um, we've got a couple minutes left, so I'll open the I mic. I have a question for you, Andrew. It's Frank here. Sure. Uh, so Pat and I and I've, have spoken a lot about how we introduce new boaters to the sport uh, or to the recreation activity, and I'm sure George's uh, group has done that as well. What was it that attracted you recently? I think you got into boating. So what was it about the sport that attracted you to, for you and your wife to get involved? Yeah, so we moved to Nova Scotia um, from Thunder Bay, which does have a good sailing community, but we never sailed there. Um, but uh, I, of course, I looked at boats all the time. My mom called me one day from Thunder Bay and said, hey, have you ever thought of sailing? And I was like, of course. Um, so she bought a boat in uh, St. Margaret's Bay. And I stepped on the boat and was like, wow, I wish I knew something. Um, and we luckily found um, someone that I was in school with that had, uh, had cruised extensively uh, globally. And they got us set up. So it took us three or four years of learning that we really knew nothing um, on, on uh, sailing a bit, my wife and I with, um, with my mom when she was available to come down. And um, that was a J30. It was a ton of fun. It was not great for a four-year-old. <laughs> so this year we took the plunge and decided to get our own boat. Um, and it's a, ben it's a Beneteau uh, 310. So still as racy as the J30, um, which is horrible for us because I'm an awful racer. <laughs> Um, I lose almost every race, but we have a lot of fun with it. Um, and I'm told by the other uh, by the other racers that uh, uh, we make way too much noise on the water. Um, but I would uh, I would say one of the learning curves for us was um, if you if you've never done boating before, there's so much to learn. Um, and it took us three or four years of meeting people, going to different clubs, talking to new people, to start to build up kind of a repository of information on where to go to look for new skills. Like how do you, you know, th those first few steps in boating. I mean, if you spent a night on anchor somewhere, that was a big journey. Um, how do you set the anchor? And even in our apps um, session, I went through using anchor alarms. I mean, my own experience with an anchor alarm is you get no sleep because they never work and they just go off constantly. So how do you actually, build the skills to be confident in setting your anchor. Um, and, and navigation, I mean, navigation is a huge one. We rely so much on GPS, but you know, the buoys that you're seeing on the water, what do they mean? Um, but honestly, I think racing was the biggest thing for us because you have to drive your boat to a specific point. It doesn't matter what the weather is doing. You've got a full crew of people there that you're directing. Um, so racing really kind of built our, our confidence up. I have, a, I have just one little note for you on the racing and particularly for Ben Yon, if you're interested. Um, this year um, at our club, which is Indian Point Yacht Club, um, we started doing these pursuit races. Um, and it takes a little math on the part of the uh, committee. But people who were afraid of start lines really enjoyed pursuit racing because you have your own start time and if you get the math right I have never seen people enjoy themselves more than coming into the finish of a pursuit race because you finish together you just don't have to start together so you know by the time you've come to the end of your race everyone's happy and they're laughing and they're giggling and they're having just the best time ever so you, you should put one in at Ben Yon. And on that note, Andrew, Sail Nova Scotia has the chart with the time, start times, uh, based on your rating. So if you want that, and the, the standard boat starts at one o'clock and some will start before and stomp, some will start after. So uh, we can certainly share that with you. Um, yeah, one, one of the photos I have here in my slide deck. Oh yeah, that one there. Um, our boat is right here with the black slides or mm -hmm. black sails, yeah. Um, and I'm also race committee on this on this race. So this is the start line. Um, yeah, I was using some choice choice language during that start. That was the spiciest start for me. So um, yeah, it takes that stress away. And a lot of your crew don't like the stress of the start line, whereas you might like it as a skipper, but the crew gets upset. We've noticed that. 
Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. We, we got our boat painted this year, so this was not my ideal. <laughs> ideal. Well, it was a great start. It was a very nice photo, but in terms of my nerves. Um, yeah, that's great. So we, we can, um, I think we're going to incorporate all of that. We've got some fun, um, fun races as well, um, that are going to be destination cruises. So we'll, you know, you can race as long as you want, but we'll all raft up for an evening somewhere afterwards. Um, so things like that to involve more, uh, more folks that the stress of racing isn't always, uh, for everyone. Um, yeah. Was there any, um, we're, we're almost at the end here and I really do appreciate everyone's time. I know 8.30 to 9.30 on a Wednesday night is, um, I chose it simply because I have a four-year-old. So he, he won't, he's in bed, so he won't come wander, wandering in the middle of this, but um, any final um, words from, from each of you, I guess, before we sign off for the evening? Just, just thank you very much for the opportunity, Andrew. And, um it's uh, great what you're trying to do here it's, it's wonderful and Benyon is such a beautiful place and uh, hello to all the members there thanks no glad well, welcome the opportunity andrew and uh, again uh, if you have any questions or any members uh, please feel free to contact us yeah and i'm so excited to find that you're here in uh, in cape breton with us george too that's mm. that's wonderful as well as uh, justin uh, frank that i've been emailing a few times as well. Um, so really great resources. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew, for, for the opportunity. And uh, again, great initiative. Yeah. And hopefully we'll get up there this summer. I mean, I love going up there. Uh, last summer was sort of touch and go, but hopefully this summer is a little better and we can come up and enjoy some time up there. Yeah. It'd be great. Uh, we always welcome anyone. And uh, just so you all know, um, this will be posted to YouTube and I'll send you all a link as well too. So feel free to use any of the stuff and I can send you the raw video stuff as well too. Um, doesn't matter, but yes, thank you all so much. And thanks for everyone who tuned in online. We had between six and 10 participants throughout the night and uh, we'll, we'll see. Um, um, and a couple thank yous from the folks online too. So yeah, thanks everyone and enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Okay. Good night. Thanks, Andrew. Good night. Good night. Good night.